This is rebuilding a large Clarkson single cylinder vertical steam engine, part 6. A visit to Blackgate's engineering to see some of the parts of the engine that are very different to the parts on the one that I'm working on. This is a demonstration model that someone has built for them up at Blackgate's. Because Blackgate's engineering sell the sets of castings in order to allow you to build these engines. I had a look at the castings and they're very nice indeed. I'm almost tempted to build myself one. As far as I can see, one of the problems I really am having with this engine that I'm rebuilding is there are quite a few deviations from the drawing. So have a look at this one up at Blackgate's in great detail, rewind if you need to, and now look at the one that I'm working on. It is slightly different. It's actually quite well made, I can't be very scathing about it really. Except it does not work, and what's more, it cannot work, because the builder has deviated from the drawing in certain key areas. See if you can spot the external deviations. Some of them are slight and some of them are not so slight. For instance, this builder has used hexagon bolts to hold the standard down onto the base and also to hold the standard onto the trunk guide. This is a good thing and really looks well. There's a bad machining error on the trunk guide on this engine though. Part of it has been turned away. I don't like the way that looks but there's nothing I can do about it and once again I am doing a sympathetic rebuild. You can also see as I'm rotating the engine that the two frames of the standard that are bolted to the trunk guide are done so with hexagon bolts. Whereas on the Blackgate's engine, the two frames of the standard are bolted to the crosshead guide using nuts and studs. This is not a problem, it's just a matter of choice. This is the Blackgate's engine and look how nice the lever arm is. Very nice indeed, very well made, machined out of one piece. Just in the way of a slight intermission, these are the castings that Blackgate supply for this engine, so you can see it in its raw state. The cylinder casting is at the front, and the two sides of the standard are sat on the box base. And here's a very substantial flywheel. There's plenty of meat on it to allow you to take a good cut and get through to good metal, about an eighth of an inch overall bigger than it needs to be. Here again you can see the main cylinder casting, and one of the bearing plumber blocks, as well as both of the cylinder covers, top and bottom. Here is a photograph of three of the range of Clarkson engines that Blackgate's engineering supply castings for. The first one is the big one on the left. They also do a 1 inch bore horizontal engine and a 1 inch bore vertical engine. I quite like the scale appearance of these engines. They do look like miniatures of full size ones. Whereas some steam engines that I work on are definitely models. Whichever engine you decide to build, if you have a drawing for the engine, and the drawing's correct, which unfortunately they're not always correct, it's best to try and stick to the drawing for the main parts. If, for instance, you compare what you're looking at at the moment with what I'm looking at on the engine I have on the bench, it's very different. On this engine, if you turn the nice little hand wheel, the valve gear moves towards reverse. On the engine I've got, if you turn the little hand wheel, nothing happens at all because everything slips. If you look at this drawing, you will also notice that it is not 100% identical to the one from Blackgate's. It's really at the discretion of the builder, or the experience of the builder. Look at this on the engine that I'm working on. That's horrendous, it's really horrible, I'm going to remake it, I can't live with that. Maybe I'll try and talk myself into using the bit with the holes drilled in it. No, it looks really stupid. I'm going to make a whole new assembly for this. It's not difficult to make, as you can see here. And being fairly experienced in such things, I will probably take diabolical liberties with it as well. I do like to deviate from the drawing. But this one is just utterly wrong. It's a complete mess. I'll probably keep the nut though, that looks okay. This is the part I'm concerned with. The ports on the engine are critical, the spacings are critical. You cannot take liberties with this. And to me, looking at the engine, and then looking at the drawing, I think it's somewhere near. I will take some accurate measurements the next time I'm in the workshop, but it's too cold today. This is the slide valve that slides over the ports, but this one does not slide over the ports properly because it is completely wrong. It is an aberration. This is the drawing showing the dimensions. And by applying a quick freeze frame to the video, you can see that this valve is nothing like the one on the drawing. In fact, this valve does not resemble the one on the drawing in any way at all which is a bit odd really. Just look at it, it's completely different. It's like a slide valve from another world in a galaxy far, far away. 
The other obvious deviation from the drawing is the lack of any adjustment facility on the piston rod gland, or the valve spindle gland for that matter. So all I need to do here is machine them as shown on the drawing. It's not difficult and it will allow adjustment. I'd like to thank my friends at Blackgates Engineering. You can actually buy the catalogue for £2 or download it for free off the website. Here's the address of Blackgates Engineering, which thankfully is very close to where I live, which makes it very simple. If you want to get them via the web, it's www.blackgates.co.uk. Blackgates Engineering do of course do worldwide mail order. That's it for the moment. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.